Sony Xperia feature Hazune Miku. This is the phone that launched last August and it's limited 39,000 devices in Japan and is currently only on the Docomo network. I've been using this phone for a long time and due to a lot of requests, I decided to make this review today. Let's start looking of this uh, phone from its back. As you can see, this phone has a special design cover. And even though it is plastic, it feels really good in the hand. And also the paint on this cover also has a textural feeling. And you can feel it with your hand when you are moving your finger through it. And when you flip the phone over, it just looks like a normal phone, Xperia phone, which is you have the power button and the volume rocker on the side. And you have a two-stage shutter button right here. The different thing is, because this, this phone has a special ROM, it has a special boot screen. As I turn on the phone, you guys can see the special boot animation specially designed for this phone. And just as the, all the other Xperia phones, this phone is rated to be waterproof. So you can, you know, wash it if it gets dirty, but you cannot put it in the water for too long. The spec is on the uh, website. I'm not really sure what kind of certification this passed, but it is waterproof. Let's take a look at the phone. As you can see, I'm on the home screen. And there are many widgets on my screen. This is the um, Miku alarm clock widget. This is a little um, uh, voice recognition, kind of like Siri, but it's made for Docomo. And you see it, it just walks around on my home screen. And right now it's its uh, Sakula Miku theme. And I have a battery level. And this is, you can anybody can download from the Play Store. And when I slide left, this is the weather widget, the Miku antenna battery widget, the Miku downloader widget, and when I slide even further, this is the Vocaloid player widget. I think that's what it's called, and you can choose different playlists, and uh, it will go on the internet and play each different songs. Okay, and on the right, this is the vocal news, creative news, and this news keep updating, and when any uh, new popular video or illustration comes up, this will update, and uh, you will always stay up to date. When you first open this phone and first launch it, the first thing you are going to do is you go to this Miku downloader, and you download all this exclusive apps. And remember, uh, because Docomo try to make more people using their service, that all the apps, all these special apps on the Google Play Store, they are restricted only Japan and only if you are using a Docomo operator. If you're using a different operator, because this phone can be SIM free, uh, it will not install but you can always install them by popping in an even invalid SIM card. It just have to be a Docomo SIM card and it will install. As you can see, uh, these are all the options. I have already downloaded, so it did not say download on the right. It just said launch. We have Miku Home, find Vocaloid Player, find Creative News, Miku wallpaper changer, Miku alarm, find your Miku, and Miku weather. It has another tab, it's called news. And this is where you get all your news. It's all in Japanese, but uh, not really hard to uh, navigate actually. You just tap on them and they will take you to the app or uh, a web page. Let's exit that. This is the Miku Downloader. 
Miku Home. Hmm, what is it? Miku Home is a launcher for this phone. It's uh, not really different from all the other Android launchers because you you get all the customization and even the uh, app drawer is the same. But what's different if you when you look at the top? It has three tabs. This is application, widget, and Miku widget. This is where you find all your special widget that for this phone. You can see there is find creative news, the player, the battery indicator, the clock, the downloader, and Miku weather. And that's it. And I'm kind of not not really happy because it, they didn't include more, but. Uh, I'm happy they included some and it's really cute and it's really helpful. Also the Miku launcher, the app drawer button is the icon is changed to a MIDI input icon, which is I think is a nice touch. But when you hold it down you can only change the wallpaper, you cannot really do any other things. And this is the Miku launcher. The next one I'm going to talk about is Find a Vocal Player. When you open this app, it's like a music player, but the only thing is it's not quite, you know, um, like the all the other music player you have encountered. Uh, it's a lot of songs, and then you can click playlist, and you can change different playlists. And for example, I change to this playlist. I can play it. This song just by tapping it and everything is streamed from the internet and yeah it is playing if you want to watch the Nico Nico video just click on this button it will take you directly to the app and you can watch this uh, video from this app Okay, I'm still uh, trying to uh, learn how to uh, how to use the uh, the player, but uh, I think that's everything. I'm getting a notification. Yeah, that's about everything of about the Find Vocaloid player, and oh yeah, you can also change your. You can also add your own playlists right here. Everything is in Japanese. I changed the uh, system language to English, but uh, all the apps they are still in Japanese. And you can take a look at what kind of song is in your uh, it's in your phone already, and you can play all the songs from this player as well. You don't have to really use the one that provided by Sony, the Walkman. You can just use this one. And this is Find Vocal Player. Okay. The next one I'm going to talk about is Find Creative News. This is the app that's uh, powering the uh, widget on my home screen. And it's not really different. There isn't much control because it's just a scrollable uh, container with uh, option that you can uh, oh, oh, not this you, you can update the news and that's about it when you click on the news it's going to take you to this special website it's going to show what this is about mostly it's if they um, illustration or a video on Nico Nico Doga there isn't much um, interesting going on, on this in this app, but uh, it's really informative because it keeps updating all the time. And this is the fun creative news. Miku wallpaper changer. This is a really interesting one. And <laughs> okay, let's ignore that. When I click on it, it's basically going to take Oh, sorry about that. It's going to take you to the um, 
a wallpaper setting page and you select Miku wallpaper changer and this is your wallpaper but what is special about this is this app is getting your wallpaper from the internet and also from an app from another special app that is in the phone I'm going to talk about later it's called find your Miku it's going to talk with the internet and that app and it, makes, it will make sure that you get your favorite wallpaper for this phone. It, let's walk through the settings. <coughs> the first one is you change, you let the app to change your wallpaper every time your screen is locked. I have it checked off because I like that wallpaper and let's check this and see what's happened when I lock the screen. Oh, yeah, I didn't close. Oops. Okay, let me confirm and set wallpaper. Boom, it's changed. And each time it's a different wallpaper. And if you want to limit just to see Miku wallpaper, you can select that in the app. For example, you just want to see Miku and you don't want to see Luca or Kato or Miko. Just check them off and they won't show you. They won't show up on your screen. When you scroll on the bottom, this is all the artists <clears throat> that if you love this artist's artwork, you check that artist's name. On the bottom it says export it, find your Miku. This is what I'm going to talk uh, about later. There's another app called Find Your Miku in this phone which is incredibly helpful when you are finding new artworks and uh, new uh, sound effects for Miku and this wallpaper changer can link with that app and whatever you favorited and exported in that app they're going to recognize and because you like that picture they're going to set it as your wallpaper and change it every time you lock your screen let's set everything back to normal <clears throat> yeah this is Miku wallpaper changer the next one we're going to talk about is Miku alarm this is a really awesome alarm clock it's not really the system alarm but uh, it's called Miku alarm and also it's there's the widget on the screen as you can see I set my alarm at 7 o'clock during weekdays and it's alarm on and when I click on that because this phone has uh, all the special stuff not only the apps they also have ringtones and this is my alarm ringtone Yeah, what a nice voice you want to hear when you are trying to uh, wake up. And I have to say that it's kind of, um, it worked almost every morning and uh, it really woke me up good. You can just, it is a normal alarm clock by application. The first is time and the second one is the date you want to be uh, waken. I want to click on that and they start from uh, Monday, Tuesday and then no Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and then, then Friday and then Saturday and Sunday. I have Saturday and Sunday checked off because I don't want to be waking up so early during the weekends. And let's cancel and the second one and the third one sorry is the uh, the ringtone. And the next one is do you want to have snooze on? I have it off. When I click in detail settings, let's see what's in the detail settings. Uh, vibration and then the alarm volume. And uh, the, the last one is automatically stop after five minutes. This one is even in manner mode, it will ring. In Japan, there's 
the manner mode on the phone, which is just like our uh, vibration vibration mode or silent mode. And this will uh, this setting is overriding the uh, silent setting on your phone, which is it will still wake you up even though you put your phone on silent, which I think is really good. I said I had a lot of trouble with my iPhone. And this is all the settings. You can add new alarms with this button. And let's take a look. See, alarm on. This is the widget. And when you click on that, it will take you directly to this app. I know what you guys are thinking. The next one I'm going to do is not Find Your Miku, it's actually Miku Weather. I will do Find Your Miku uh, the last because I think it's the best app in the phone. Let's see Miku Weather. Let's launch it. When you launch it, it's all in Japanese and this is basically the uh, setting page for the uh, widget on your home screen. You choose where you're at. Too bad it's limited for Japan only. As you can see, I'm in the Tohoku region. And which prefecture? I'm in the Miyagi prefecture. And I'm in the east. So I set that. And this is update duration. And update. And the last one is the application that provides the um, provides the weather for information. It's kind of sad they limited only for Japan, but that's what this phone is uh, basically marketed for. So that's not really surprising. But I hope that they don't limit anything. They could just get the weather information from AccuWeather. But uh, that's what they decided to do, and we can't change it. Let's cancel that. And take a look at this lovely widget. Because, okay. The artwork of, in this widget is really amazing. It was snowing yesterday, so the little icon on there is actually a snow miku icon and it's really cute as you can see it's at night so you can see miku is with the moon and tomorrow is going to be sunny and also cloudy and this i this icon changes due to the weather which is really quite a nice touch yeah this is the percentage i think percentage of perspiration precipitation sorry and uh, temperatures and I think that's uh, that's it nothing really special about this little widget is uh, basically providing you weather information on your home screen okay now find your Miku this is a really big application that's why I decided to show it the last and it took quite a long time to launch and as you can see when it's launching it has a little Miku jumping and here we go right now I'm in the wallpaper section which is I can just scroll it and then take a look at all the wallpapers that I submitted for, for this app a lot of these wallpapers are really beautiful let me see let me scroll mm. Okay. okay, let's take a look at this one. This is the Piapro link. When you click on this, it will take you to the Piapro website of this uh, artist. And let's go back. This is where you export and download. That's when the uh, Miku wallpaper changer knows to set this as your wallpaper. Let's take it to the sound section. And here you can find new ringtones or new alarm clock sounds, new notification sounds. It, it's the 
it's really cute. Uh, And these are all getting uh, from Piapro, and you can see you can export it, save onto your phone, and uh, this is the Piapro link. You can open it there. There's a little tag icon on the side. You can see this is I selected all, so it will show everything. It these are the uh, like really long ones and then loop um, where you can choose uh, loops or just a short um, voice and let's go back to illustration mode okay and let's see in illustration mode the tag is more extensive you can see there's different tags about the clothes the uh, facial expression, the style. Let's change it to a pen. Yay! All um, the Miku a pen artworks showing up here. Set it back to all. I love how they make this tag uh, filter and make searching really, really easy. And this is Find Your Miku. And that concludes all the special apps that are included in this phone. The next I'm going to talk about like a, just the general usage of this phone, like how this phone really feels when you're using it and what kind of applications on here. So I'm back on my home screen. As you can see, little Miku is still uh, uh, dancing. I don't know why she always dances. She's dressed up as a Sakula Miku because it's spring. And if it's not spring, I just dress it as normal clothes. Yeah, I have a little Suica application, as you can see. I'm kind of broke. I only have 50 yen in my Suica, but I'm going to charge it later. And what is this does is uh, because this phone is NFC enabled, and also it can be used as a mobile wallet, kind of like Google Play. But I think it's much much better how Japan implemented this Suica. A lot of you know this uh, transportation card that you can use on trains or even uh, convenience stores or McDonald's. You can use that as a, a, like a prepaid card to pay your uh, train fares or your foods. And this little app make this phone a Suica card. So you can use this to get on the train, getting off the train. You don't really have to take off your wallet and charging it is really easy. You can just do a bank transfer or credit cards. So every day I would just go to the stage and tap this phone on the uh, on the gate and then it will open. And it's quite fun. And just like all the other otakus in Japan, I also have Animate, the app. And uh, this, you can all get it from the uh, Play Store. And, and that, when I open, when you open it, uh, this phone is also one sec capable. What that means is, I'm not really tested overseas, but it can you can watch t television on it. So when I launch the one sec app, and let's see, let's just take out this antenna. Yeah, television. Yeah, you can watch television on this thing. It's really quite sweet. Let me turn on auto rotate. And you can record it like your favorite television show on this phone. I have a lot of my friends that they, they watch television, you know, during class and because there is a uh, game or anything and let's quit this uh, app and as you can see that's the notification and it's still playing let me just quit this app
And just as all the Xperia phones, it's uh, included a lot of the Xperia apps like the album and the. Uh, when I scroll to the right, these are the play memories stuff and social life news, reader by Sony, all the Sony um, apps. And that's basically all these apps. Uh, on my phone right now. I only install like so many. But uh, here you go. When you go to the setting page, it's really just like a normal Android phone. There's Wi Fi, Bluetooth, data usage, call settings, sound, display, storage and uh, Docomo, because it's a Docomo phone, it has Docomo all written over it. Uh, I, I kind of like Docomo, it is my current current operator. It's um, really nice and really fast LTEs. With this phone sound, okay, let's see what kind of uh, ringtones <clears throat> included in this. Now, this is my current ringtone. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. It's basically Miku telling you, oh, there's a phone call. <laughs> really cute. There's a lot of uh, special ringtones. I think I would drop my phone if I hear this ringtone. <laughs> And you have all the Xperia ringtones, which is I'm not going to waste your time clicking through all of them. Uh, that's everything. For notifications, I'm setting this. This is my current notification. And there is more. Everything with a number on it is uh, the special ringtone for this phone. And with Miku on, and this is all the uh, sounds with Miku. Sounds 
Sounds a little bit similar with the phone calls. It's just telling you that you have a mail. And these are all the same, so I'm not going to show them. And these are all the defaults. What I'm going to next do next is I'm going to show you what is actually in the box. This won't be an unboxing because uh, I've already been using this phone for quite a long time. And right now I'm just going to show you guys what is in this box. So the first you get a little stand that uh, you can set your phones in and then it will charge your phone. stand a little Bluetooth remote control Sony has released this a while ago but uh, right now I released a special color the Miku color with this phone you can plug your let's zoom in you can plug your uh, normal 3.5 millimeter jack into it and there's the volume rocker this is the uh, charging and you can put it on your shirt there's the playback controls everything and there's an NFC tag mark means that you can just tap on the phone and it will smart connect you don't have to do anything extra it's really easy to connect with this thing so this is this and they include a pair of earphones not really good one but uh, decent They, what do you ha guys have to remember that this box does not include a AC wall charger. It means that you have to get it your own. I was kind of surprised that they don't have it. But I'm pretty sure that you will have one laying around. And uh, you can also charge this phone via USB. They also don't give you the cable though. You have to figure it out by yourself. And overall, this is a really nice phone. It packed with many uh, different features and it's the best of Sony at that time. And I really love using this phone. And it really worth the money. This phone, it's uh, if you sign a two year contract with Docomo, you can get it um, almost for free. But uh, you do have to pay uh, a lot every month. And uh, after the monthly support, you end up paying about 200 US dollars for this phone after the two-year contract. And if you do not do the uh, two-year contract, this phone on eBay, I have seen it selling over $1,000 or $800. And if you have any chance to go to Akihabara, you can get it for way less because I have a feeling that they did not sell enough that they wanted it. Even this one is limited, only 39,000 of them around the world. Not really around the world, like in Japan only. Still, they did not sell enough. And there's still models laying around, need you guys to pick them up. So, the eBay ones are just really overpriced and really do not recommend to spend that much money for this phone. Just wait a while because this phone will always be here. It will get cheaper. I got this phone for roughly $400 and uh, this phone is SIM unlockable. Means that if you're in Japan, you get this phone, you could go to the Docomo store and uh, request a SIM un unlock code for only $30. But if you bought the phone from eBay and you have shipped it to your country, if it's not SIM unlocked, you're probably out of luck unless you come to Japan to unlock this phone. And there's one more thing about the phone is because it's Docomo tried to make everybody use their service, all, all the apps I've shown you, all the special Miku apps need you to have a Docomo SIM card at least to install them. And all the Docomo um, service apps need you to have a subscription. It means that you need to have a valid SIM card and you need to have a network, Docomo network in your area, which means you have to be in Japan to use those. That did not really pro uh, propose a much big problem than 
the other ones because I rarely use the Docomo uh, apps. They're really not that good. Just the Miku apps. If you get this phone and you are not in Japan, make sure to get um, a really cheap, like, like a SIM card, Docomo SIM card, just for activation. You don't need the SIM card to be really valid, just need it to be Docomo. And you put it into the phone and you download all the apps and you switch back to your old SIM cards. And that's uh, when your phone is uh, SIM unlocked. There are services online that are doing unlock. Uh, I have not checked up, checked them yet, but uh, yeah. And when you get this phone, there's something that you need to uh, keep in mind. And this phone also has 32 gigs of memory inside that you can store quite a lot of stuff. But it also has a micro USD expansion port. You can expand your storage. And overall, this is a great phone. It's a Sony and I really like Sony stuff. Uh, if you ever have a chance to get this phone, um, you will you'll really love it if you're an Android user just like me. I just switched to Android like a couple months ago. You will really like it. And uh, the uh, if you have it unlocked, then it's perfect uh, because this phone is unlockable. Uh, that's everything I need to say about this phone. I hope this is helpful for you guys, either you want to get it or you are uh, just want to check it out to see what it looks like. And after a month of usage, I really like this phone. It just a little feel a little slippery, I'm, I'm really afraid to drop this, so I probably need to get a case. But then I will lose out the texture feeling on the back, so I'm still uh, <laughs> thinking whether getting the case or not. I probably will. So this is the Sony Xperia feature Hazune Miku phone. I know it's quite late because this phone has already been out for a long time. And I just did a review today. I, I still hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, the next video is going to be the Figma. It's right here. And uh, I'll see you guys. Later.